Next up, we've got our first new fuel equation mode. So this is the modeled fuel equation mode. Um, what it is, is it's, it's basically a volumetric efficiency mode. What it does is it, it efficiently and correctly measures the airflow flowing through the engine and adds the correct amount of fuel to suit. So if we um, go on, we'll start talking by, about the benefits. So one of the first benefits that we're going to talk about for the model fuel equation mode is that it's based on metric information about the engine, the injectors and the fuel system. So um, all, all metric data and um, quite a few different extra inputs compared to what we've had on the traditional fuel equation mode. Second thing is um, that changes to the engine setup that do not affect the volumetric efficiency mean that you're not going to have to retune that volumetric efficiency table. Changes like the injectors or the fuel pump, um, anything like that that doesn't actually affect the amount of airflow through the engine means that you're not going to have to retune that volumetric efficiency table. So this is um, going to save you time and money um, when you're modifying your engine from its original tune. Now, um, injector and fuel pressure correction. There's two ways in which this works on the model fuel equation. The first is, quite often when you get your injectors from your supplier, they'll have the injector data at a certain pressure, possibly 3 bar, and you can enter this into the ECU. But what happens if you decide you want to run a different fuel pressure from um, what, what the manufacturer was testing the injectors at? With our new model fuel equation mode, you're able to do that and the ECU takes care of that compensation. All you need to do it is tell the ECU um, what value of fuel pressure you actually are running. There's also an option there to have the a fuel pressure sensor feeding into the ECU and then the model fuel equation will use this information and if the fuel pressure changes during the engine running, if, um, if the regulator starts dying and the fuel pressure starts dropping off, the ECU is automatically going to compensate for that and it's going to start richening up that mixture. So we do recommend running a fuel pressure sensor with the model fuel equation. It's not essential but you will get a better result with it. Another one of the advantages, is, advantages of the model fuel equation is that it considers the cooling effect of the fuel on the intake air temperature. So um, we know that cooler air is more dense and that's going to require more fuel. We also know that adding fuel to the intake air temperature is going to cool it down. So the ECU and the model fuel equation is going to take um, advantage of, of knowing these things and there's a parameter there where you specify the, um, the cooling effect that the, the fuel is going to have on, on the intake air temperature and it takes this into consideration. The other thing that the model fuel equation does is it adjusts the fueling based on fuel temperature. Um, again, this and a lot of the other benefits that I've talked about here, they're going to give you more accurate fueling. The more um, inputs and data we know about the system and how it's changing, the more accurate the fueling is going to be. Now, um, clearly to know the fuel temperature, we're going to need a fuel temperature sensor, and so we do recommend having one of those feeding into the system as well. Okay, let's, um, let's start talking about how the model fuel equation actually works. So the first step in getting the, the model fuel equation working is the ECU needs to determine how much air is flowing through the engine. So let's take a look at some of the parameters that are used to work this out. One of the factors that is used is the fuel charge cooling. As I talked about before, injecting fuel into the intake air, temp, into the intake air stream is going to have an effect on the charge cooling. The other thing that we've got there, as I talked about, is an optional function on the traditional fuel mode is the charge temperature estimation. So um, with the model fuel equation, this is um, a compulsory thing. It needs to be used. So what this does is, again, it specifies at, at different RPM and different load points the amount of influence that the engine coolant temperature and the intake air temperature have upon the enrichment. The ECU needs to know the number of cylinders that the engine has. It also needs to know the engine size in cubic centimetres. Now, one of the other inputs that um, the ECU uses on the model fuel equation to determine the amount of air coming into the engine is the volumetric efficiency table <coughs> or fuel table. The way this works is that um, it's basically a table that has engine RPM across the top and load down the y axis. And we're going to enter values starting at zero for zero airflow, 
and it's going to go all the way up, um, up above 100. And what this is, is it's, a, it's a, a percentage number, and we're using it as for volumetric efficiency. You're going to tune that much like you would have tuned the, the fuel table in the um, traditional fuel mode. Another input is the load input, same as in the traditional fuel mode. This is also used on the model fuel equation. A lot of this is going to depend on your engine setup, um, throttle bodies it has, and the load actually you're using on your fuel table. So once we know how much air the engine is flowing, the ECU uses this and um, puts it all together to work out the air charge estimate. To this air charge estimate, the ECU is going to want to add the correct amount of fuel. So there's a few different um, inputs and, and parameters that the ECU uses that, and let's go through those quickly now. So we've got the lambda target table as the first one. Now on the model fuel equation, that is going to have to be in lambda. Um, AFR is not an option. So coming into there, you're going to want to enter into your values for it. Generally, the way this works on, on a lambda target table is stoichiometric is the, um, a value of 1 in lambda. And as the um, engine speed increases and the load increases, we want to richen up the fuel mixture in our lambda target table. So on, on lambda, this means that the number is going to decrease as the, as the engine RPM and the load increases. The next um, input into the fuel mass calculation that we want to talk about here is the fuel density. Now different fuels do have different densities and so we need to tell the ECU what is the density of the fuel we're using. Um, is it petrol? Is it ethanol? Um, by telling the ECU this, it's able to correctly calculate the, the fueling better. Now, if you're not sure what the density on your fuel is, the good news is in the help file, we've listed quite a few densities for different fuels. So, um, yeah, check out the help file if you're unsure on this. Another input the ECU is going to need, and depending on the fuel type, is the stoichiometric ratio. Now, um, in lambda, the stoichiometric ratio is, is 1, but in AFR, it's going to vary depending on the fuel type. So for petrol, generally around 14.7 to 1, and for ethanol, somewhere around 9 to 1. We've got a table in the help file that has a few different fuels listed with their stoichiometric ratios. Now one thing to keep in mind is this can vary a little bit with the, with the fuel um, from season to season um, or from supplier. So uh, if your supplier is able to supply the data for the fuel, then that's so much the better and you can enter that into the ECU. Okay, and another thing we haven't talked about so far, which is pretty important though, is that the fuel density does change with the temperature of the fuel. So we've got what we call the fuel density temperature coefficient. It's a bit of a mouthful, but basically what we need to do is enter a value in there that's going to tell you, tell the ECU how much the fuel is changing its density by per degree Celsius. Now, um, in the help file again, we have a table of different fuels, and you can find um, the value that you need to enter here by looking at that help file. Right, so once we have all of that fuel mass calculation data coming in, the ECU is able to calculate the correct amount of fuel for the airflow, and that um, comes together to be the fuel mass to inject. Now, there's one more step though before the fuel is injected, and that's the injector characterization. So we've got a few inputs into the injector characterization section of the fuel equation. Um, so we've got the injector dead times, that's pretty important. Again, um, the injector um, data sheet from your supplier is probably going to have this information in there for you. We've also got the injector reference pressure. So this is the pressure at which you're running the injectors at. Um, if you're using a fuel pressure sensor, it's going to take this information directly from the fuel pressure sensor so you won't have to enter a value. Short pulse width adders, as we talked about previously on the traditional fuel equation. The model fuel equation also uses short pulse width adders um, to compensate for that non-linear area of the injector. Also got a setting called the minimum injector pulse width. Now what this does is it specifies the minimum pulse width the ECU is going to be allowed to use when doing fuel injection. Now, the main, main use for this is probably a safety factor. If you happen to change some settings in the volumetric efficiency table and you accidentally um, lean out the, the fueling for the engine, if you know what the standard um, sort of 
fuel pulse width is going to be at idle or in, um, you can specify in there a value that is slightly lower than this and this is going to stop the ECU from leaning out um, the, the engine because you've incorrectly tuned a cell. Now the other thing we need to enter into the ECU is the injector flow at the rated pressure. So on the data sheet that you've got from your supplier you're going to have this information. It's going to tell you how much fuel the injector flows um, in cc's per minute and it's also going to tell you at the, which pressure that is. So in the rated pressure this is where you're going to enter the, the rated pressure that the injectors are rated at. We've also optionally got the fuel pressure input. So um, if we want to have the ECU compensate for different fuel pressures then it's vital to have a fuel pressure sensor and while it is optional it is definitely recommended for the model fuel equation. Once we have the injector characterization data added on to the fuel mass calculation it comes together to form the actual injection pulse width and once we've got this, this is the, the amount of time that the ECU is going to be applying to the injectors to give the fueling that is required for the engine.